Hi, I'm Timo Harbo, and I run the course Python for Structural Engineers. In this video, I'll show you how you can use some really basic Python to create some pretty amazing calculation templates. We'll go through the calculation of a reinforced concrete beam, and first we'll do a standard capacity check, and then we'll try to do some optimization. And along the way, we will only use the very basics of Python. So to get started with Python, you can simply just go into Google Colab. So you can see the URL up here, or just Google, Google Colab. And in here, you can start to write some code. And you can also write some explaining text in between your code. So now let's get to the example that I wanted to show you here. So this example here is also created in Google Colab, but you can of course also run it on your local machine. So what we'll look at is a calculation template for essentially doing a very standard capacity check of a reinforced concrete beam, like the one you see here. I'm not gonna go through the details of this notebook. I just wanna show you what you can do, what you need to know, and what cool things you can actually do with some pretty basic Python. So we start by defining some geometric parameters like the dimensions of the beam, material properties, rebar properties, design factors, the applied load, and we can now use the variables that we declared up here to calculate some new values. And you can see that the syntax of Python is really quite straightforward. So I wanna find the design strength of my concrete with this formula up here. I write it exactly as you would expect me to. I wrote these variables up here, and now I can reuse them down here to calculate a new value. I calculate the area of rebar from the diameter of the rebar that I've used. And now we get to some actual structural engineering where I need to check that the force couple from my compression zone and my rebar actually allows me to resist the applied moment. So I need to go through these three steps here. I need to calculate X, I need to determine the stress block size, and then I can calculate the area of steel required. And now, this here is a calculation template. This is something that you could share with other engineers in your department. And think of how this would look if this was an Excel file. How would you QA these formulas down here? This here is this formula up here. And this is extremely easy to quality control. If you had it in Excel, you would have these cell references where it's extremely difficult to ensure that it's actually correct. Whereas here, it's written out in a very easy to read way. And you can write this nice explanation along with your code to much better explain the approach you have taken to solve the problem. So now we implement these formulas here. And lastly, we calculate the area of reinforcement required. And you can see if we just run all the code until this point, run before here, then we can see that the required amount of reinforcement rebar is this, the provided reinforcement is this, so the provided rebar is sufficient. So this is a pretty nice calculation template. So yes, you can also do this here in Excel, of course. And if you wanted to make it easy to QA, you could limit the amount of code you put into each cell in Excel. But now let's look at something that would be much more difficult to do in Excel. The first thing is that we can simply turn all of this code we have just written into a function. So that means that whenever you wanna check a beam, you can just write check beam, give it the parameters that this beam needs to be calculated, and you actually don't have to worry about all the code that's inside this function. So we declare the function, and now we wanna use the function. So we say we have an applied moment, we have some geometric parameters, we have some rebar parameters, then we say that utilization is equal to run the function, check beam with these input parameters, and let's see what utilization we get. Here we get 31%. Let's try to increase the moment a little bit. So if we increase it to 150 kilonewtons per meter, we get up to 74% utilization and so on. So this is a nice way to kind of pack your code into a single function, which makes the overall flow of your program a lot easier to read. And you can use this function inside an optimization loop. So let's say that we were set on wanting just three bars in the bottom of the beam but we wanted to figure out what the smallest diameter bar we can use is. So for that, we can loop through all our bar diameters from eight millimeters to 40 millimeters. And for every bar diameter, we check the beam. 
So we take the first eight millimeter and we check the beam, then 10 millimeter and we check the beam and so on. And then we simply look at what is the utilization of a beam with 3.8 bars, 3.10 bars, 3.12 bars, and so on. So we run the code here, and you can see that we need a minimum of 3.16 bars to get the utilization under 100%. Another check we might want to do is to find out for each bar diameter, what is the minimum number of bars that can help us resist the applied moment. So first we go in with an 8 millimeter bar, and then we keep increasing the number of bars by one until the utilization is under 100%. So first we try with one eight bar. Okay, that's not enough. Then we try two, then we try three. And when we have found the sufficient number of eight bars, then we do the same thing for 10, then we do the same thing for 12, and so on. So you can see if we run this little snippet of code here, you can see that if we want to use eight bars, we need nine. If we want to use 10 millimeter bars, we need six. If we want to use 12 millimeter bars, we need four, and so on. And now comes probably the most important message in this video, and that is that Python is really good at doing whatever you ask it to do. We ask it very clearly to keep increasing the number of bars until the utilization is under 100%. But what Python is not very good at is what you as an engineer is really good at. You can judge which one of these bar diameters best fit your project needs. So if this beam fits into an area where you're already using 12 millimeter bars everywhere, then maybe you don't wanna suddenly use a 10 millimeter bar in your beam. You may also know that you don't wanna use a big 32 millimeter bar because it's difficult to lift in. And there may also be other constraints that are not straightforward to communicate to a script. So it's about finding this balance between what does it make sense to have a script do for you and what does it make sense that you as an engineer take care of? So using Python as an engineer is not about just automating everything. It's about taking the boring tasks and speeding them up. And it's about giving you the possibility to do these iterative calculations that can make your design better. And lastly, it's about creating calculation tools that are easy to quality control and are easy for others to read. So in my course, Python for Structural Engineers, there are quite a few modules and everything you've seen in this video is something you will be able to do just after going through the very first module. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please feel free to leave a comment and see you next time.